Hello and welcome to AMD Meet the Experts, our partner webinar series discussing everything from consumer laptops to gaming desktops to commercial products such as professional graphics and the data center. Thank you for tuning in live. This will be available on demand following the live version of this webinar. Today, SimCenter 3D and AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro processor powered workstation we're going to learn all about how Maya HTT is leveraging AMD power devices like Lenovo ThinkStation P620 to get more work done faster. On your screen is today's agenda. We're going to go ahead and bring in our experts. Today, we are joined by two experts, Zoya Zare and Andy Parma. Zoya is the product owner with Thermal Multiphysics Product Management Team at Maya HTT. Zoya, could you tell us a little bit about your role at Maya HTT? Uh, sure. So, as you mentioned, I'm a product owner with the product management team. Uh, I interact a lot with customers. Uh, I work with the development team in setting the direction for where the product's going to go. Um, and so, one of the activities we did was to benchmark the performance, and that's what we're talking about today. Yeah, we're excited to see those benchmarks and that performance. Uh, we also got Andy Parma with us today. His name is synonymous with Threadripper Pro. He is the Director of Product Management at AMD. Andy, tell us a little bit about your role. Thanks, Ryan. So I lead AMD's uh, workstation processor business. So all of our workstation processors for desktop and mobile workstations uh, is what I'm responsible for. We're excited to have you both on today. Before I pass things over to our experts, we are going to talk a little bit about your dashboard. You have multiple windows open up by default. You can move those around and resize them to your liking. I want to point your attention to the resource list. We have a, a few resources related to today's topic. We've also got a register now button for our upcoming webinar. And I always want to remind people before you go today, make sure you click that survey widget at the bottom right of your uh, screen to give us some feedback. All of those. Uh, images on your screen are the different widgets for the different windows. So let's uh, talk about today's objectives. Today we are going to be, these are our objectives. Find out how you can help your design and manufacturing customers, engineers, be more productive with the AMD product, the AMD Threadripper Pro processor. We are also going to learn about SimCenter 3D Thermal Multiphysics and how it has helped customers reach their goals faster and more efficiently. Let's start things off with a poll question. That's how we like to do things on Meet the Experts. Today, we're going to learn a little bit about you or your customers. Which industry do you or your customers work in? Is it aerospace and defense, automotive, energy, electronics, or other? And we're going to see the results for these on the next screen. So let's see what you or your customers work in. And largely other. Wow. So Zawa, you're going to be Zoe, you're going to be informing people that are not within those uh, first four. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass uh, things over to Andy's to start things off. Um, take it away, Andy. Thanks, Ryan. So thank you to each of you for joining us today. I just wanted to give a brief product overview of the AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro processors, and then we'll let Zoya focus specifically on the performance of these processors when using the SimCenter 3D. So AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro uh, is available in the Lenovo ThinkStation P620 workstation. Uh, and in this product, it delivers unprecedented performance. Uh, it's got up to 64 cores uh, for leadership multi-threaded performance. It's also got uh, the most scalable I.O. capabilities. So with PCI Express 4.0, you can get the most performance out of NVIDIA uh, graphics cards, out of AMD Radeon Pro graphics cards, as well as high performance NVMe storage. And also it's got unprecedented memory speed and bandwidth. So for compute intensive applications like SimCenter 3D, uh, the large number of memory channels and the fast memory speeds of AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro processors allows you to get data in and out of the processor extremely fast. I wanted to talk about some of the customers that are using AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro. So these uh, workstations have been in production for a little bit over a year, and we've shipped to over 125 customers. 
Uh, some of the uh, customers that are using our products, uh, WPP as the world's largest advertising agency, uh, they are using uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro to create a virtual set of a physical location. They'll go out to a physical location, like for instance, a mountaintop location, capture that, and then create a virtual environment uh, using that, uh, that data. Uh, also, Aston Martin uh, is using it for a virtual and mixed reality uh, simulation. Uh, they've created a virtual showroom uh, where you actually have enough fidelity in that virtual showroom that you can change the color of the stitching. You can't have that level of fidelity in a virtual and mixed reality environment with anything other than Threadripper Pro. One of the first customers uh, that talked about how Threadripper Pro positively impacted their business was Epic Games, the makers of Fortnite. Uh, they talk about how uh, the high core count of Threadripper Pro dramatically reduces their compile times. And finally, specific to the manufacturing space, uh, Predator Cycling is a bicycle manufacturer for Tour de France and Olympic athletes. Uh, they make custom bicycle frames and bicycles, and they use uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro for a number of manufacturing applications, including uh, you know, structural modeling as well as uh, airflow and wind flow simulations on these bicycles. So those, those are just a few of the customers that are having success today with AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro. So we talked a little bit bit in the overview about uh, the capabilities of the product. Uh, so we talked about that 64 core uh, pro workstation processor, but we also have the first 12 core four gigahertz pro workstation processor. So whether your uh, workload requirements need extremely high frequency or extremely high core count, we can give leadership application performance for both single and multi-threaded workloads. From a uh, a system standpoint, again, leadership memory bandwidth, more memory channels than computing solutions, and each of those memory channels runs faster. So especially for manufacturing applications that allows you to get data in and out of the processor very quickly. And from an IO standpoint, we have more uh, expandability, more PCI Express lanes than computing solutions, and each of those runs faster. So again, this enables you to get the highest performance out of uh, NVIDIA GPUs, out of AMD uh, Radeon Pro GPUs, as well as high performance NVMe storage. And all AMD Threadripper Pro processors are built uh, with all of our AMD Pro features, including AMD Pro Security, AMD Pro Manageability, and AMD Pro Business Ready. So you can confidently deploy these workstations into your IT environment and know that you'll have full uh, manageability and, and management capabilities for these, uh, these uh, workstations. So a little bit deeper dive in the four product offerings. Uh, so we've got a 64 core, a 32 core, a 16 core, and a 12 core product. So four different product offerings within the Threadripper Pro family. Uh, each of those has a maximum frequency of over four gigahertz. Uh, the 32, 16, and 12 core uh, each have a all core frequency of over three and a half gigahertz. And the other thing that's important to, to really note is on the kind of the right half of the slide, all of them have the exact same capabilities from a you know, power standpoint, a memory standpoint, a PCI Express standpoint. Uh, so you know, what you can really focus on is getting the right mix of core count and frequency for your application needs. And you can know that all of the parts have uh, the full feature set from an IO standpoint. You don't have a situation where uh, some of the lower core count parts I don't have uh, all of the features. So just a brief uh, overview of the performance of AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro. On the right side, you see a comparison of one 64 core 3995WX against a workstation using two of the competition's best. And again, 27% higher performance with one 64 core Threadripper Pro 3995WX against two of the competition's best workstation processors. On the left side of the graph, uh, you see uh, for a single processor workstation, the best processor that the competition has is a 28-core processor. And you see that the 32-core 3975WX delivers 67% higher performance than the competition's best processor for a single processor workstation and the 64 core 3995WX delivers almost 2.4X the performance. So like I said earlier, there really is nothing like Threadripper Pro for your high performance workstation workloads. 
And finally, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper on those uh, PCI Express Gen 4 capabilities. So this is a graphics uh, intensive workload. And again, this shows that when using um, AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro, you can get up to 37% higher performance on graphics workloads. So again, when we talk about unleashing the performance of your graphics card, there's nothing like AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro to unleash the full performance of your graphics card. So with that brief introduction, I'm now gonna pass things over to Zoya and he's gonna talk about SimCenter 3D and using Threadripper Pro with SimCenter 3D. All right, thank you very much, Andy. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what what these words actually mean, like SimCenter 3D, uh, how we work with, uh, who is my HTT, um, and where everything fits into this, uh, uh, to this work that we've been doing with uh, AMD. Uh, so my HTT, uh, we are a development partner of Siemens Digital Industry Software. We develop uh, software that goes into the SimCenter platform, and we've we've authored quite a few over the years. Uh, Maya has been around for about 40 years. We started out in the space industry, um, essentially doing thermal analysis on satellites uh, orbiting up, you know, around the Earth and also around other planets. 75% um, of our staff are scientists of are scientists or engineers, so we've got a very high concentration of very bright and intelligent people working on very exciting products. Uh, we've authored over 30 software modules for Siemens, uh, one of which is the thermal multiphysics, which I'll get into. Um, but we're also the number one worldwide partner, uh, last we were, the number one worldwide partner for Siemens, uh, which we're very proud of. So we are very, very closely partnered with them and have been for the last 40 years or so. So over to you, Ryan, uh, we have the next poll question here. I guess the, uh, the there we go. So um, most of the customers I, I, are I, in the other. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up that we had we, we had a few more results. So I wanted to show our results from our previous poll question. So we've got, uh, like you said, some more uh, feedback from our viewers, but we've got some electronics, some automotive and engine, uh, energy, uh, as well as a lot of from others. So I just wanted to show that. And then let's do our new poll question. Um, which is talking about what type of compute resource do you usually use to run your simulations? And for this one, you can uh, give more than one answer. And we've got laptop, workstation, on-premise cluster, uh, cloud computing, and hybrid cloud. So you can choose more than one of those. Again, what type of compute resource do you usually use to run your simulations? Please select all that apply and I will turn things back over to you, but it looks like Workstation is the primary and on-premises cluster. Uh, I know you've been talking a lot about that, uh, Zoya. Right, so thanks for that. Uh, so now, I think this will be very interesting for the people who attend. Um, let's talk a little bit about what SimCenter is um, and the way SimCenter thinks about uh, products and product development. Um, there's the idea of the digital twin that's supposed to represent your product completely in a digital form. So, you know, going from the right-hand side, which is a design phase, even into the manufacturing phase where you're building out your product in real life, uh, you can uh, plan all of this and account for all the variables that you need to so that you end up with a product that makes sense and is successful on the market. Um, part of that is the uh, our three pillars, uh, which is to increase the realism uh, within those models, which is to provide some kind of continuity so that there's easier collaboration between the different teams. And then the ability to explore designs or the design space in a very uh, systematic manner. So on the realism front, you know, you, st you always start out with a simple model, you know, back of the envelope, and then you build that out into something that looks more like a real world uh, example. Continuity is where we find a lot of um, um, challenges so it can be where you know it's disconnected where people are sending emails or it can be more managed or it can be what we would like in an ideal world to be completely integrated um, and on the exploration side you know it used to be more like oh ad hoc let's pick this design let's pick that design and then it became more automated where you're doing batch uh, runs but now it's become more intelligent where you can start to zone in on more interesting areas of the design space and really really optimize your your work when you put all this together you end up increasing your productivity and thereby allowing innovation to flourish, right? So uh, you spend less time on the mechanics of the design, uh, like, you know, of the design process and more time on actually doing the engineering work. Um, and 
where we sit within the Sim Center framework, which includes you know CE simulations, system simulations, physical testing, thermal multiphysics is in the CE simulation uh, domain. Um, so thermal multiphysics is one of the products that sits within the Sim Center 3D platform, um, and it covers uh, two of the you know various physics that uh, that we really uh, capture. That that's flow and thermal. Um, we also do coupling to some of the other products. Uh, we'll go, I'll briefly mention that. But basically, we sit on top of the NX CAD platform, which allows us to really integrate the design with, or rather, the simulation with the underlying design. Um, we include comprehensive physics for CFD, so that you know you can do your flow simulations uh, to the accuracy that you desire. Uh, the thermal solver, which, as I mentioned, started out in the space industry, has been extensively tested, and it's an it's the market leader in our opinion. And um, for thermal solutions, and it's both open and extensible, so you can actually uh, add code uh, and particular subroutines to do some things you're really interested in. Um, and then we take all these, and we can do thermal CFD structural co-simulation all in the same model, which is a very unique feature uh, that exists within the SimCenter 3D platform. Um, on the design exploration side, we, we leverage the HEADS engine. So if you're familiar with HEADS, it's a very intelligent way of going through your design space and finding optimal solutions for your designs. Uh, so again, all in the same platform. Um, and then because the platform itself is quite open and customizable, you can automate a lot of this. You can customize it to the, the UI, to the way you like, and integrate it into your process much more easily uh, than one would think. And then of course, there's the data management aspect, which happens with the Team Center uh, uh, product that exists within the Sim Center uh, the eco ecosystem. Now, uh, thermal multiphysics in particular, uh, as I mentioned, it started around 40 years ago. And then um, uh, around 1990, we started adding the thermal flow coupling. Um, and that's also the time where the ideas, uh, Siemens product st started morphing into uh, NX. Um, and then today it's now called SimCenter for the simulation aspect. Um, fast forward to today, uh, and we, we started you know, doing things like thermal structural, and now we can do all of thermal flow structural within the same environment uh, in thermal multiphysics. All right, so that's uh, in a nutshell what SimCenter 3D does. Um, an example of a customer that really benefited from all of these components kind of working together was an aero engine customer. And I can imagine how difficult it is to design a, a gas turbine. There's so many moving components, so many different things to consider. Um, and where we helped with collaboration with Siemens was to really reduce the computational time of thermal solver um, and make their uh, designs turnaround time much, much faster. All right, so part of that process is to do the benchmarks that we've been doing. And let's go dive deep into a little more what we did this time around. So we had uh, three compute resources that we were comparing. One was the Lenovo ThinkStation P620 uh, that had the Threadripper Pro, uh, had 256 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000. We had a cloud computing resource, so uh, basically a Intel Xeon processor with 185 gigabytes of RAM per node. Uh, the amount of RAM available varied, you know, based on how many nodes we asked for. And then we have an on-premises cluster that is equivalent to what we were using on the cloud computing resource. Um, so it had up to 336 CPU threads with 3.5 terabytes of RAM. And we looked at two representative models. We know, for example, that CFD is computationally intensive. So we use that as a, as a benchmark case. The other one, which we see, is what we call the radio heat transfer computations. This one is extremely com computationally expensive and difficult to perform. Uh, so we thought this would be a good way to kind of push the, uh, the Red Ripper Pro's uh, capabilities. Right, so uh, one challenge that we found was that um, on on a Windows machine, even if I ask for more than as I, when I ask for more than 16 cores, the the threads start out on let's say 32 cores and then they migrate back to the initial 16. Um, and this is related to job scheduling algorithm. Um, and there was I tried different ways of trying to get around it, but eventually what happened was all of the cores ended up on the first 16 there, and then uh, it they compute for execution time and it makes no the results you get are no longer representative. Uh, the AMD team kindly provided us with a thread pinning script that runs in the background, and then the thread is assigned to a core and it remains there throughout the simulation. And the result is what you see on, you know, the, on the right-hand side on a 64-core run where everything is being used, and this is exactly what we want to see. 
All right, so let's look at the models. Let's look at what we found. Um, the CFD model had 28 million elements. Um, it's basically an autoclave that's used for curing composite panels uh, for use in aircraft. Um, and then, uh, you know, the flow is, is quite complex, so it's, it's a good uh, uh, example to use. And what we saw was, if you start with the, the orange uh, uh, bars here, this was the on-premises cluster. So this served as our baseline. Um, and we can see good scaling up to 96 cores. You know, by that point, the model, we, we know the model's a bit too small. So we can, if we increase the size of the model, we can continue to see good scaling. So we're, okay, we're happy with that. And then when we look at cloud computing, it's kind of equivalent to the uh, on-premises cluster, uh, uh, cluster. So that's good as well. Okay, we know that things are scaling well. We're, we're comparing apples to apples. Great. Um, when we use the AMD model uh, uh, computer, we immediately see an improvement in the uh, in the run times. So it's scaling well and it's running faster. So this was a very, very encouraging result for us. Um, I'll mention that we used thread pinning above 62 cores. And the reason you don't see more cores uh, for higher than 32 is because we didn't have sufficient memory to load the model. Uh, but I'm pretty confident that if we you know, added the extra memory, we can see the scaling up to 64. So, so that, that was a great, great result. Um, for the radiation, this needs a little bit of a background, but basically we used what we call the, the Utah, tea, Utah teapot. Um, and that's sitting on a surface that's both transmissive, so you know, radiation, uh, thermal radiation can pass through, and reflective, so it can reflect as well. Um, and the bottom surface here is fully specular, so it's basically a mirror surface, right? Um, this circle here is essentially beaming thermal radiation towards the, the teapot. And the result of this combination of you know these guys uh, interacting with each other is this final image here. You can see the overlay of the teapot in, in two different ways, right? Um, the thermal model itself, it looks like it's quite small. It's 168,000 elements. But really, what matters is this number of U factors to be determined. You can see it's like 10 to the 10. It's very large. Um, so this is going to be very difficult to solve uh, using conventional methods. Um, so when we do the scaling test on the uh, the Threadripper and we see good scaling up to 32 cores, and then we see a little bit of you know an increase in the runtime, um, this was because the once again the model is a bit too small. So if we want to see more, uh, in, you know, scaling, the model would have to be increased in size, and that's fine. So we we know where that's coming from. Um, the new development is that uh, we actually have. A, capability to run radiative heat transfer on the GPU. So we use, uh, we turn on the GPU feature, and once we do that, we see an order of magnitude reduction in the runtime on the GPU. Um, so this is a game changer for many of our customers. They used to have to wait days or sometimes even, you know, a full week or two weeks to get results. Now they can get the results in half a day. Um, so because of the major portion of this simulation is actually the radiative heat transfer, uh, just running on the GPU makes their lives much, much easier. And then uh, the question comes up, so which one's best? I mean, we kind of looked at the performance, but there's also the the uh, effect of cost, right? For a workstation, you've got a fixed up run cost. You've got some fixed regular maintenance that you do or your IT department does. Um, you do have control over the setup or in the configuration, uh, but you don't have job scheduling, at least not out of the box with, with um, uh, in, in general, right? Um, for cloud computing, the cost can vary depending on your usage, depending on the urgency of the task. Um, but there's no maintenance, so you know if someone else is taking care of your your compute resources, and you don't have to worry about that. The setup and configuration is pre relatively straightforward, even for someone like me who's you know who can be new to it, and I was able to get through it and get everything going. Um, and then job scheduling comes part of the package. For an on-premises cluster, there is a fixed upfront cost, of course. But there's dedicated maintenance efforts to make sure this continues working uh, as you're uh, as you're using it, right? And you have full control over the setup and configuration, um, as well as you know you can set up the job scheduling how you want. So then, how do you decide which one's best for you? Um, it's a difficult question to answer because we found customers have different needs, right? Some would prefer having a shared workstation that everyone can use. Uh, some would rather offload their processing onto the cloud and just let let that take care of it. Others are more concerned about you know the data security and keeping the data in-house so they use the on-premises cluster. 
re you would use whatever works best for you and whatever works best for your uh, company. But what we've seen uh, is that the um, there is a, an argument for the workstation where you have a shared resource within the company that the users can use easily and they can tap into easily and get their results much much faster. The uh, missing piece was the job scheduling. And for that, we actually have a new uh, offering within the SimCenter platform, which we call Remote Simulation, uh, where once the workstation set up, uh, they uh, users would just simply submit uh, directly to the workstation. They'll get this web interface where they'll see all the dialogues and all the uh, log files, and then they can get the run done, get their results back, and they don't have to worry about anything at all about setting up and configuring all this stuff uh, uh, for their remote uh, simulations. Um, so that's the last piece, and I think that will make it more compelling to use workstations for for your compute as a compute resource. Um, so in summary, um, SimCenter 3D Multiphysics. I mean, I, I, I went through it a bit quickly, but basically we have a platform that makes the workflow easier for customers as well as provides rapid answers when you're running simulations. We use we looked at two representative problems: one in fluid dynamics and one at heat transfer that are relevant to many applications. Um, and in particular, the GPU computations, we saw that they offer order of magnitude reduction in runtimes for radi radiative transfer. The challenge we saw with the thread pinning was resolved by the script that AMD provided. So we made sure the threads did not migrate to the first 16. Um, and the resource requirements can vary. Uh, that's what I talked about last. But the Lenovo ThinkStation P20 is a viable option uh, where you can have one or multiple shared machines that people can submit their jobs to uh, remotely and have that uh, dealt with with the remote simulation. And with that, I pass it back uh, to the AMD team. Thanks, Zoya. Uh, so just one last slide we wanted to talk about before we get to Q&A. So we talked a lot about design and manufacturing today. And you see when we summarize uh, the performance of Threadripper Pro for design and manufacturing workloads, again, uh, a 4 to 37% uh, performance advantage over two of the competition's processors for the design and manufacturing workloads that we've tested in our labs. But if you uh, work with uh, other uh, verticals as well, other key software products, uh, we've again tested uh, Threadripper Pro for uh, media and entertainment workloads. And again, performance advantage is up to 52% for media and entertainment and also for software development. So if you are a software developer, uh, we have a large number of customers uh, doing software development using Threadripper Pro. And again, based on our testing, up to 31% higher performance for software development workloads. So uh, while uh, Threadripper Pro is fantastic for SimCenter 3D, uh, it is also a great solution for media and entertainment workloads, software and sciences workloads, and even provides a double digit performance advantage for architecture, engineering, and construction workloads. So with that summary, I will pass things back to Ryan for a brief Q&A. Yeah, we're gonna be brief with our Q&A guys, but uh, appreciate uh, both of you. And let's get right into a couple of questions before we leave. If we stay a little bit longer, uh, apologies, but make sure you do fill out that survey. And Zoe didn't mention, but these slides will be available in the resource list when we finish the live version of this webinar. So question number one, I'll go right to you, Zoya. Um, do we need any special license to run thermal multiphysics in parallel? Uh, so when you get uh, thermal multiphysics, you are able to run on up to eight cores uh, on a single machine. We do have a DMP license uh, where it will unlock that, uh, that restriction and you can run it on as many cores as possible. Uh, this is going to be a question for Andy, and I'm going to kind of combine some questions here. You know, first of all, what, what is the which workloads do we recommend each of the Threadripper products? And then also we had a question that was talking about when do we use Threadripper Pro, Ryzen 9, or Epic? Sure. So on the first topic, uh, within design and manufacturing workflows, we really recommend the higher core count, 32-core uh, and 64-core processors uh, for applications like you know, manufacturing optimization, uh, generative design, a simulation like we talked about today with SimCenter 3D and rendering. Uh, for workloads that are more uh, frequency sensitive, well, we recommend the 12 core and the 16 core processors for workloads like 3D modeling and design. There was another question about when we recommend uh, to use Ryzen processors versus uh, Threadripper Pro versus Epic. Uh, and so within uh, the, the focus that we're talking about today within design and manufacturing, uh, we really recommend Threadripper Pro 
uh, for design and manufacturing workloads. And the reason is for a couple reasons. Number one, uh, those eight memory channels that I talked about earlier has double uh, the memory channels of third gen uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper and four times the memory channels of um, uh, AMD Ryzen processors. And again, those extra memory channels get the data in and out of the processor very quickly. Uh, also, Threadripper Pro has support for RDIM memory. Uh, so RDIM is a much higher capacity memory technology. So it allows you to put more memory into the workstation and it allows you to load uh, much larger, more complex models directly into memory. So again, especially when using uh, design and manufacturing workloads, we recommend Threadripper Pro uh, because of the large memory capacity with RDIM technology and the high memory bandwidth uh, with those eight memory channels getting data in and out of the processor. As far as relative to uh, Epic, uh, again, that's gonna be mainly a decision of uh, where you wanna run uh, your workloads. Do you wanna run those locally on a workstation or do you wanna run those in your data center? We recommend uh, both you know, Threadripper Pro and Epic uh, for your manufacturing workloads. And uh, like I said, I think that the, the workloads that are optimized to run our workstation, run a Threadripper Pro, and the ones that scale better uh, to a data center environment, we recommend that those run on AMD Epic processors. Well, thank you for that, Andy. Let's get to one more question. This is regarding uh, a question about GPU. When talked recently with SimCenter support engineer, our understanding was that GPU competition was not released yet. Would you like, uh, would like to know how you did that calculation? Um, so it will be released in the next upcoming January release. There will be a an early access feature that allows you to to, to do GPU computations. Um, so it is. We look out for the SimCenter 2022.1 release. You'll have it there. There you go. You're getting a sneak peek. Let's do one more question before I let everybody go. And this last question is just related to: Can SimCenter 3D simulations be run on Linux? Uh, yes. So uh, the Cluster ones were run on Linux, so we are very much, we, we do support uh, these kind of runs. Well, guys, thank you. Those questions that we don't get to, I'll make sure we answer those offline. Um, really quickly, just want to thank all of you for joining today. Uh, again, I want to let everybody know that the slide, the deck, the presentation will be available in the resource list. And uh, once again, I'll bring on my experts just to say thank you. So thank you so much, uh, Zoya, for um, being here today. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. And, and, to speak. and Andy, thank you also for joining us. And we look forward to having you guys uh, on, on again with Meet the Experts. Yeah, Ryan, thank you for having me. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending. Hopefully uh, you enjoy this information and uh, enjoy using the Sim Center on Threadripper Pro. And again, uh, you can find this available on demand a little after this webinar concludes. Thank you all for joining, and we'll see you at the next Meet the Experts. Make sure you hit the Register Now button for that next one and, and fill out the survey. Uh, we'll see you then.